hello and welcome to the business growth show where we talk about all components of business and how to utilize them for exponential growth my name is Nathan Cassiotis. I'm a business growth expert who help business owners grow and scale to create wealth and freedom. Today, I have an awesome guest. His name is Bob Korf, and he has solidified himself as one of the best dialect coaches for actors and one of the most popular voice coaches for speakers in all fields of work and one of the most successful vocal coaches for singers at every level. And he's developed a successful line of audio courses that help actors learn a dialect, learn to get rid of an accent, learn to sing and also improve their speaking voice. And the list of celebrity clients he has taught ranges from Lenny Kravitz to Gwyneth Paltrow, just about everyone in between and becoming one of the most successful voice, dialect and speaking coaches in the world globally. And he has starred in over 103 episodes of The Everyday Show and played significant roles in productions like Jesus Christ Superstar and Grease. And Bob is dedicated to enhancing the vocal talents of individuals across the entertainment industry. Welcome, Bob Korf, and thank you for being on my show. It's my pleasure. Good to be here. Awesome. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing show for everyone watching and listening today. So you're a successful entrepreneur. So for those who don't know who you are, just please introduce yourself by telling us a bit more about you and your journey. Okay. Well, my journey started when I was very young. I was in high school. I was graduating from high school that summer and the Beatles came on Ed Sullivan show for the first time Americans had ever seen it. And I saw them and I went, oh my God. And I called a friend of mine who played the piano and I said, let's start a band. And he said, okay, I know some friends I got. And he, he set up a rehearsal on Saturday of that week. We played together for a few hours and somebody called and said, do you have a band available? We need something for an opening of a gas station. We need a lot of noise so that people will know that this new station is there. And I thought, gee, I don't know if I do openings at gas stations. And they went, what are you talking about? We've just rehearsed one time. So we went there and as luck would have it, somebody from MGM Records came in to get gas and they signed us. So I started by being the lead singer in a rock and roll group on MGM Records. I didn't even know I was a good singer. I mean, this, this was, I was hoping it would be, but they signed me. And then after that went on for a while, I did the lead in Hair, which was a big Broadway hit and I played Claude for 11 months. So I early on realized that I would do a show that would last two and a half hours, eight times a week. And so that was a great training ground for focusing on, you don't want to be thinking about other things when you're driving this big engine. And so that was a great lesson and then after that, I did the lead in Jesus Christ Superstar. I played over a thousand performances over the whole decade of the 70s. I didn't do it back to back to back. But I did uh, Jesus Christ Superstar on Broadway. I did Greece. I did Danny Zuko in Greece. I was under contract at Universal, which is right down that street. And I did a lot of shows during the 70s. And I started in a film for Roger Corman. And then I did a television series called The Everyday Show. And when that finished, there was an actor strike that went on for a long, we just came through another one. This was the first time they've struck since that one in 1980. And I said, I, I'm, I have some money here, but I'm losing my mind. And some girl said, can you show me how to do this? And I went, Oh, okay, because I was I had nothing to do. And she came over and she loved what I did with her. And then she called and said, Can I do it again? And then she started telling her friends. And within a couple of weeks, I was all of a sudden being a voice coach, which I had taken many lessons, but I had never even thought about being a voice coach. But this thing built, well, it could have been also that I had just finished a, a television series, so people went, Oh, he's on, he's teaching. 
But it just, it, it was an amazing transformation and it just took off. And I didn't tell my agent for a year until finally I went, I have a new way of entertaining and teaching people and helping people. And that's how I became a voice coach. And I worked, I've done, it's now we're going on 40 years. Amazing. What a story there. And I love it. You know, and I think it's a true test about that. There's always challenges and things happen externally from us, but there's always good things that can come from that as well. And, uh, you know, that voice, that, that amazing end, you know, doing it for over 40 years now is, is amazing. And uh, I'm sure, yeah, you know, your craft very well. Um, so yeah, let's get into it now. Um, so let, let's go our voice, you know, it's so important. Uh, and I'd love to know, like, how important is it, you know, like, especially for influencing, others around us it, it may be one of the most important things you can use and people uh, are not using it more than ever for several reasons one i mean after the pandemic people were all sort of holding their breath because they they were afraid of breathing in somebody's you know disease and so that didn't help but also when i was young if i wanted to get a date i had to go talk to a girl and now young people don't do that anymore they 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 type it in they you know their phone and so the ability to communicate to use your instrument fully to know how to breathe so when you don't talk much then you start holding your breath and you're talking and doing everything wrong and people are doing that and even if you have a great product, whatever it is you want to communicate about, if you don't have an instrument that lands, it actually hits them and vibrates them, you won't sell it. You might have, you know, just on a fluke, somebody needed one of those. But basically, you need to speak and use your instrument as a resonator that will actually resonate the person you're talking to. So when people talk the way they usually do, I can see you and hear you, but when you talk and you know how to breathe and you know how to resonate in your chest, you see them, hear them, and feel them. And when you feel them, it's a third sensation. You go, there's something happening here with this talk I'm getting. I get it. I hear it. I feel it. So yeah. that to me is some, just sort of sums up how it it's I'm lucky because I get to work with a, a lot of people who are tuned in, but a lot of the world is not tuned in. They don't know that they need to work on your instrument. I came up at a time where all the actors spoke like that. And I thought, Jeez, uh, and you know, it's not that you have to talk like that, but they were all trained to talk that way. So today it's more casual, but still you have to have a good instrument. If you're dying away at the ends of things, it's like people don't want to work that hard. They want to hear what you said. So the last word of a sentence is usually the punchline. So you don't want to go, uh, let's get together tomorrow to a little club. You go, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not sure when that was or what that was. So you need to be strong from beginning to end. And it takes some learning and work. But once you have it, you now have a tool that will work for you. Yeah, I love that. So powerful. And I know one of the lines, um, you know, people tell me is, it's not necessarily the words that you say, it's how you make people feel, right? And um, and I think it's, uh, you know, communication has these three elements that a lot of people get taught where a lot of it's nonverbal as well, right? So you've got, um, you've got your words, but that's a very small portion. Then you've got tonality, which is what you've been talking about, right? That resonance. And then you've got the body language area as well. So which, which can impact, um, you know, what you do too, um, even though we are talking more about the voice here, but I'd love to know your thoughts around these areas and making sure that we're in harmony, I guess, so that we're getting, you know, our message across. Yeah, you want to keep it simple. I mean, a person who's doing this is interesting for a minute, and then you get a, 
a headache. So you want to keep it simple and keep focused and make sure that you're sending information and looking and make people feel like you're looking at them. I mean, I've gone to many shows because I know a lot of singers and stars over the years, and I'll go backstage and afterwards and say, you know, during that second song, we really had kind of a moment there, didn't we? He said, believe me, when the spotlight's in my eyes, I don't see anybody. And, and but I felt that connection. And that's a, a good performer. They're yeah. sending it out. And if you were in anywhere in that direction, it feels like it's hitting you. Yeah, I love that. So, so true. And I have been on Broadway as well. I went to New York, um, you know, uh, in November last year and um, yeah, got to see Michael Jackson, um, you know, the musical there, which is amazing. And um, <clears throat> I love the story and it's so true, right? You got to be able to do it. And, and And this is not just for everybody because we all we all need our voice, right? Whether we're just speaking to people in a in a business meeting, communicating, whether we are a speaker or an entertainer, um, you know, it's all just an instrument um, in different ways. And um, you know, I think I think an interesting topic now that we should be talking about is looking after our voice as well, because I know a lot of people if they don't use their voice properly um, and do how they use it, and you know, their breathing and things like that, um, you know, it, it can become a problem later for them. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit more about why, you know, looking after our voice is important as well? Well, absolutely. And it's really the basis is breathing. If you don't breathe properly, you don't have a good voice. And most people are living, locking up their diaphragm. It's like, I'm ready for the punch. If you attack me, I'm ready which is fine if somebody's attacking you. But if if they're just standing there, you need to use the muscles properly. And if you want to see perfect breathing, remember or think about a baby lying on its back. That little tummy comes out, that little tummy goes back in, and they can scream all night long and never get laryngitis because they're doing it perfectly the way it's meant to be. And then what happens is that your parents have to civilize you. So they start to go, no, 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 take that out of your mouth. Don't, don't, no, no, don't do that. And so a little kid's going, what? what? I love this thing in my mouth. What do you, so they're being attacked for things that don't make sense. And so when you get attacked, your first impulse is, and protect your vital organs. And so we get good at that. And then you go to school and those friends are poking. And so you sort of get good at being ready for anything. And you get a tight diaphragm. And if you don't learn how to use it properly, you're, it's like lifting something heavy and talking all the time. It's a lot of pressure as I'm talking to you, if you just lock up your diaphragm. And so we can talk about, I can even do a little breathing exercise to show people how you breathe. Not, I didn't invent this. This is really the way the human body works. I'm sure everybody would love that, uh, to listen to that now. So yeah, share with us, um, you know, the best okay. way to do it. So I'm gonna stand up so you can see my stomach. And here's what, I got my fingers right, right around my belly button. That's sort of the softest spot you've got there. So most people are like this. If you hit them, it's just nothing's moving. When you breathe properly, I think I need to take some air. My diaphragm goes down and it pushes my, my stomach out of the way. So I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to push my stomach back in. Air comes out. The diaphragm is a one-way muscle it only goes down. So the only way you can get it to go back up, which is the part where you're talking from, you need to take your stomach muscles that got pushed out and bring them slowly back in, which pushes the air up through your lungs, and then you vibrate with your vocal cords and you articulate with your mouth, lips, and tongue. So just for a second, we'll do a couple of those so that people can feel it. and. The easiest way, stay, I'm standing now, you have to learn how to do it standing, sitting, and lying down. But 
the easiest way to do this exercise if you, you, you're just starting is lie down because you're not holding, the, there's no muscles in your legs working, it's all connected. So eventually, once you get it done, moving right, then you can sit up and do it, then you can stand up and do it. The easiest way is either sitting or lying down. Fill it up, blow it out. Fill it up, blow it out. It's not just belly dancing. I can move my stomach in and out, but I need to actually think I need some air. And I get out of the way and air drops in. I push my stomach muscles back in, pull those in, and it pushes the air up and out. And then you, I'm going to give you the next part of this. I want you to take your finger and your thumb, put it around your larynx like this. And I want you to say, oh, oh, oh. Oh, and when oh, you, oh. Do you feel a little vibration in there? Yeah. That's your vocal cords inside your larynx going like this. Oh, oh, oh. The first rule of voice is you've got to bring your vocal cords together. If you don't, if you have laryngitis, your cords are swollen and you can't make any sound because they're not coming together. So when you get better, your cords come together, the air comes up, vibrates them, and then you articulate with your mouth, lips, and tongue. You're vibrating in your chest, a little bit in your cheekbones. But this is where, this is the biggest vibrator you have as a human being. So when you put your hand in your chest and say to somebody, go, and you feel that vibration in your hand, do it, try it. Go. Go. Feel a little vibration there? Mm. That is the resonance. So when I'm talking to you now, I can feel that I, I'm vibrating. When I'm vibrating, I know you're being vibrated by my vibration. And then the message needs to be clean and clear. But those two things going together land and make people go, I'm, I'm interested in that. Tell me more. Instead of, I'm trying to, you're talking a little fast and I don't hear the last word sometimes. You need to, you have to give it to them. You have to lay it out for them so that they get it. You know, pe people, I, I never, I'm never bored doing my job. When I get bored doing my job, I'm going to be finished doing my job. But when I'm, when I'm doing it, I really am there. I want them to get my message to get this into their system so that they have use of a tool that's really in the body it's there and we just need to reorganize it and then you will feel the power that you have when you communicate yeah i love that so true and uh, so, so many great points there about, I love the vibration because everything is vibration really around us, right? About how we do things, so how we, we resonate on, on similar levels. And, and I agree, I did some voice, um, you know, coaching lessons and it was because my, my voice was like going a little bit, right? And, um, you know, and I, I went to, I found someone um, and it was uh, very interesting because, uh, you know, I've heard the stories of like Tony Robbins, for example, right, with his voice, and he almost lost his whole vocal cords because he wasn't using. I was worried about him for years. I I listened to him years when he first started, but I heard how he was banging those chords. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. I'm sorry, that's, but I, I understand. That's all right. Yeah, and it's 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 so true, right? And you hear the story where he almost lost them all, but somehow he's able to connect them again. And you know, ideally, it's it's like anything. Prevention is better than cure, right? You want you don't want to get to the point where you're like that because you know then you've got to do other things to to manage it. You want to have you know the good foundations so that you have longevity um, in whatever you do, but especially in your voice because um, you're talking to people um, or, or you know communicating a message. Um, you know is so important. So I, I love um, I love these things and yes, all about the breath as well. And like I, I do a lot of speaking myself, and I know you know there's a lot of other people that are getting more into speaking these days. So I'd love to know your thoughts, like as a speaker, um, you know, what, what strategies can we do, um, you know, to ensure that our audience is like, you know, actively listening, engaged in everything, um, you know, as we're using our voice. Well, if you're really interested, you need to do work 
you need to actually uh, do vocal exercises. And I have programs in which you can get something that will give you that exercise. I use it myself five days a week, minimum. In the morning, I warm up. It's about a 20 minute workout. You can build up slowly, but you are using the muscles properly, breathing, articulating, getting your vocal cords tuned up and vibrating together. And you need to do that. If you're really using your voice every day, five days a week, and uh, you know, six days. And when I'm doing workshops, I do workshops for people too. And I, I, I'll tell the story of myself. I, I went to a Calgary uh, College in Canada and I was teaching the professors there. And this is early on when I was teaching and I was teaching eight, 10 hours a day. So I thought I'm strong as a horse. And, but usually when you're teaching, I say something and then they say something, it is a back and forth. And I started lecturing at nine o'clock in the morning. And by 12 noon, I started to go, uh oh, I'm in trouble. My voice is not used to talking nonstop. And I was really, I went, oh my, I'm in deep trouble now. Luckily, I had enough technique that during lunch, I recovered. And then I made sure that I talked for a while and let other people do stuff for a while. So it wasn't just me. And then from that lesson, I will actually start vocalizing two or three times a day for a week or two before the big, the big meeting with people so that my voice will be strong at midnight if we've gone really long so that my voice is ready because people go, I, I, I screamed in, in this one thing and then I lost my voice. It's like, well, your, your body's going, we don't do this. <laughs> You've been screaming for five minutes, 10 minutes long, and the throat just goes, we're swollen. I mean, it's like, you know, if I punch you hard for five or 10 minutes in your arm, that arm is going to swell up. And then it doesn't work so well the next day. So I learned my own lesson. And whenever I do workshops, I, I just double and triple depending on how long and how many people I need to communicate with, I just double it up, triple it up so that I know you can punch me. I'll still be able to do it. I love it. Um, and so true. I just finished um, a three day um, of my three day MBA business growth boot camp, and I was speaking for over 80%, right. Of the time, um, you know, over three days. And I know that if I hadn't learned these techniques of how to, how to breathe into my voice, um, you know, it's happened before, even over a few hours, you can, you know, you can lose it um, over that time. And, and, you know, then you won't be able to get your message across as well. Exactly. I mean, and when I'm giving workshops, I've done, you know, weekend workshops, uh, I get up, even if it's freezing outside, go into my car so I don't wake people in the hotel and just vocalize in my car before the first session. You have to know that something will be there to support you. You can not do that and you may be okay, but after a while you go, why would I even want that possibility? Definitely. It reminds me of sport, right? Like being an athlete. And I think as an entrepreneur, like we are an athlete, um, you know, that, and they always warm up, don't they? Right. You know, before I go out there, otherwise you can get an injury, similar thing, right? And the best athletes are there earlier than all the other athletes. And they leave later thinking and working on things that they wanted to clean up from that game. And I just go, isn't that interesting that the best do more? Definitely. Um, you know, don't be lazy. Um, do, do the work and, and recover, allow yourself and, and all of those things that come into it, um, the preparation and the delivery. I love that really, really powerful. Um, so I'd love to know about, you know, influencing persuasive communication here, right? Because it's a little bit different than just, you know, talking to people. Um, if, you know, what, what sort of techniques or what can you recommend for people that want to do more of this so that, you know, we can get, I guess, more of, you know, what we want as well? So I'm going to tell you some stuff that I, I found. And that is that 
one of the reasons why people have in the past and still do Americans is that we go down at the end. We say, this is something you should do. And that is a command. So, uh, and no other country in the world does that. And my theory is this, I think I'm right after all these years, but this is my theory. My theory is that a thousand years ago, people realized that if they go, if I say, oh, uh, I, I like the shirt you were wearing yesterday better, even if it's negative, you kind of go, man, nah, that doesn't really bother me. But when I say, you know, the shirt you were wearing yesterday looked better, you kind of go, hey. So, and we don't know that we're even doing that way. But mostly, if you're not a criminal, you don't, you're not trying to screw people up. You go, I think you should do this. This is good. That's a tree and that's the floor. And almost everybody else in the world goes, that's a tree and that's the floor. And so there's a little, if you don't agree, so what? Does that make sense? So when you're talking about something that you want them to get, if you go down, if you say, this is really good. I know that if you do this, it's going to work. As opposed to, I, if you do this, it's going to work. That sort of is like, if it's, a, or if I say something, you know, I think you should wear the, the, the black jacket. Uh, if I say you should wear the black jacket, if it's all right with you, that's 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 what for an American we'd be going. Uh, you know, not, not, I'm going to go up because I don't really want to get. I don't want to upset you. Yeah. And for whatever reason, we just go. I think the black one is better. And so, with Daniel Tolson, who we talked about, who introduced you to me. Uh, I don't have him do because he's he's Australian, so he has a tendency to go up. But I have taught him this, so when he he doesn't do it on everything, but when he has a real point to make, he goes down at the end. This will get it done, and people go. I think he's right. Nice. And so that's that's a that's a tool that really. Uh, even people from other countries, and I'm not trying to change their whole approach, but when you just pick the one, this is the most important. I, I've said three things, and now I'm going to say what it sums up to. That's the one you go down on, and people go, sounds right. Mm, I love that. Really, really powerful. And I love to hear your thoughts around speed of talking, um, because like I have quite fast you know, thoughts in my mind, I guess, you know, I listen to audiobooks faster and, you know, podcasts and, and things like that. And I can speak quite fast um, in, into what I do and I adjust it as I go. Um, and, and I see speakers out there that, uh, you know, are a combination. Maybe it's very slow. Maybe it's very fast. It's sort of in the middle. Um, you know, I'd love to know your thoughts around, you know, speed and everything about, you know, getting a message across and, and do we adjust it or, you know, how, how we do that to, you know, to really connect, you know, with, with our audience. I think, you know, if I was talking to a bunch of voice coaches or people who do similar things, I could talk really fast because they know the buzzwords. So if I say the diaphragm, you know, articulation, I could talk really fast and they're going to get it. But when I'm talking to somebody who doesn't know everything that I know about this topic, I think it's important to slow down to help feed it to them. I'm not, it's not like I'm condescending. I'm just going, this is something you should do. And if you, the other thing that Americans do that works is we elongate the vowels. So I always say to the actors, I mean, if you're British saying, stop, you have to be an even better actor than, than an American because we go, stop and you go geez i think you must be to stop there's longer time for you to put your thoughts into that vowel but most people just go stop and so i think if you slow down and say 
breathe from the diaphragm and make sure that you do it cleanly and slowly. It's going to really help you. And that's what I think a lot of people forget, that other people don't know what I know. So that's why I say, if I get, if when I start saying, you know, breathe from your diaphragm and, you know, just make sure you get your stomach full of air and I, I'm, I'm quitting. I know that I no longer find this area interesting. But if I do, I don't want to go fast and prove how smart I am. I want to go slower so they can pick it up and go, oh, and because often I'll get somebody on the third lesson going, did you? Did you say that thing about the diaphragm before? I, I never heard it that first. I went, I say it every time. They don't, if you're, it's a lot of new information you're usually delivering. So I think it's nice. I don't think you should be boring and speak like this, but I think you need to, there's some places where you get excited and say, you can do it. That's fast. That's good. But if, if you're giving them new information, you should slow down and feed it to them gently. Let them have a moment, you know, having pauses. If I say this is going to change your life, I want you to have that moment to think about it. See, the, the, if I go, this is going to change your life. And then if you take this, it's going to really change your life also. It's like, no, if I say something that's really powerful it's not it's not like i'm going to stop for 30 seconds i'm going to stop for four seconds maybe and just let it because you get it in your head but it's nice when you have enough time to let it go and drop into the body yeah and so we we can speak faster than a lot of people can take in and information but even wow. smart people they like it to, for you to lay it out for them so that in the beginning and then once you both understand the same ideas then you can speak a little faster but i think the world is going too fast for everybody great points there i love that um really really powerful and uh, you know uh, I'd love to know your thoughts around technology side of things, right? Because I think, you know, technology is changing a lot of things about how we do things and um, how we're maybe analyzing ourselves and things like that. Is there any things around technology that could be helped, you know, there to enhance or improve, you know, how we um, communicate as well? Uh, I'm, I resisted a little bit because, I, I, you know, I think that, one-on-one -on -one is a good way to learn. It always has been. I, I'm sure that, I mean, I sell programs that tell you this stuff and teach this stuff and do exercises and there's a table of contents and you can see all the different parts of it. So I think you can learn by listening to people who know, but I think it's, you know, in the old days, in opera, that would be like, they would have two students and they would they would fight to, to have the attention of this one teacher. I mean, there were masters and now everybody's a master. But if you find somebody who really knows how to do it, you should take their information. Because, because I was a singer and an actor, when I first started teaching, I thought to myself, you know, Here's my policy. I know more than they do, and I never want to give them anything that could hurt them. And I know when you've sung that many hours and weeks and months and years, you know that if you keep on banging at it, you'll hurt yourself. So in the beginning, that was my policy. And then as I learned stuff, then I kept adding all this new information you learn every day by working with many, many, many people. Uh, get, work with the best people in the field, if you can. Definitely. No, I agree. And uh, I think the stats for courses and things are very low, right, in, in terms of people doing them because of 
the no accountability side of things, right? And this is where the one-on-one, you know, coupled with with something like that, or you can do it in the session, but maybe you have some homework after um, and do that is that's where it's really powerful. And I think this is the power of coaching and mentoring, right? You know, about having somebody there to guide us and everything. And I'd love to know your thoughts on, on you know, how important coaching and mentoring has been for you in, in what you've done and what you've helped you achieve. I I was very lucky in the, I, my first singing teacher was Giuseppe Bellistrieri. And he was, you know, Italian and he was an opera singer. Almost all the singing teachers in those days, they were all opera singers. I once sang him some songs from hair and I that got cheers every night, standing ovations. And I said, what are you thinking? He says, he sheet. You know, for him, it was like, it wasn't opera. It was terrible. Uh, but that that was the first time that tape recorders ever became portable so in the old days you had to take a lesson to get his vocalese to do the scales with him and then i brought it in and then i could do it every day at home and because that was my job to be a singer i did it five days a week and when i moved to new York, i was in california to start when I moved to New York and I heard people vocalizing out of every window in Midtown, I went, I got to work harder. I, and, I, and I did. I went, oh, my God, it just upped my game. I went, everybody is singing in every window here. So I better be doing it even more. And I did. And that's what made me stronger and better. And that's what will make everybody stronger and better if you find the right information and consistently do it that's that's the part that make separates the winners it's like for me i i, I get up at four or five o'clock in the morning because I do so many things that I really want to do, like meditating, vocalizing, breathing exercises, uh, uh, chanting, all kinds of things, get on the treadmill. There's a lot of things. And so I would always, I started by just going a half hour earlier to do the one thing. And then I went, uh, let me, six months, nine months, a year later, I threw in another half hour. So now my wife and I get up at four or five because we both like to, to get all the things we need to do done before the phone starts and all the craziness of the world. And then we can work because we've done the things we love and know we need to do. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, definitely. I love that. Um, so powerful and, and you know, great um you know things to do in your in your routine and rituals so that you are yeah become consistent and becomes natural right um over time which is uh you yeah, know it's, it's hard the first few days or weeks but then it goes right in it's like oh okay that's it i love it and this is how we train ourselves you know like like you like me um we weren't born like this right we've learned the things and we've done them consistently enough that they become automatic and you keep doing that right over time to build yourself into whatever you want to do, which I, I love, um, you know, all those things there. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a very powerful episode today where you shared so much gold with all of us. And I guess as we're starting to wrap up, what one key piece of advice would you like to give to all the entrepreneurs watching and listening today? Uh, you know, I, I think knowing exactly what your purpose is. One time years ago, I was going to do the biggest event I'd ever done with many, many people. And as I walked out the door, jokingly, I said to my wife, now, what exactly is it that I do? And she said, you help people. And I went, yes, now I know what I'm going to do. And that's what I do. I mean, that's my job is helping people with things that I've learned that they can learn love that so so powerful and um so true right is knowing what it is because then that'll be the driving force right in in everything that you do from there and yeah so so powerful so love that other, i'll give you one more yep. uh, when you need to communicate 
is stronger than your need to be comfortable, you become a communicator. I love that. That's a very good saying. Um, you know, side note, I made people um, do a, a Facebook Live, um, you know, and some of this was the first time, right, <laughs> you know, that they'd ever done one. And you could see that it was like, oh, I don't know about this. And I had to, you know, obviously upgrade their mindset. But it was like, you've got to get a bit uncomfortable sometimes, because then once you do it, it becomes easier as well, right, over time. And, and don't sit in that comfort, because nothing ever comes from, from comfort, right? It comes from getting outside. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's not good in business. It's not good in life. It's like, it's like if you want to be in bed, that, that's fine, but it's not going to get anything done. Exactly. Love that. And uh, yeah, we connected, uh, you know, through our networks. So I learned about your your awesome journey to, from starting as an entertainer, you know, and doing all these amazing things to being, you know, the owner of, of Cork War Studios uh, for over 40 years. Um, you know, you're an awesome guy. I'm sure you, you know, so much value that you shared with us today. And I'm sure you continue to um, help, you know, speakers, actors and communicators of all kinds to communicate their message, um, you know, a role and very grateful uh, that we connected and I look forward to working with you. So Bob, how can people find you and get in contact with you? Well, you can go to corfvoice.com. That's C-O-R, F like Frank, F like Frank, voice, like it's one word, Corf, V O I C E, corfvoice.com. That's my website. And you can go on, uh, lo lots of places will be there available to you to learn about who I've worked with and, and how I work. And there's a lot of stuff that you can get. And then there's all the courses for speakers, singers, accent reduction, learning an accent. We do, we take it from every angle. I love that. Um, definitely check out Bob, everyone on his website there. Um, and, um, you know, everything that he's got to offer and he has worked with the biggest names in the business. I've checked that out. Um, so it is an amazing list. So imagine learning from the best right in the world, you know, about what this is as he works with people globally. So check that all out. Uh, it's been a pleasure interview you and you and uh, thank you for being on my show. That's my, it's my pleasure to be with you. I enjoyed it. Thank you everyone for watching and listening to this show where we talk about everything on business growth and please like subscribe and leave us a five-star review you can find me on linkedin facebook instagram and youtube as Ethan cassiotis or visit my website ethancassiotis.com if you want to grow and scale your business you can reach out to me on any platform to see if we're a good fit i completely agree with you or do i the only way you know is if you tune in next time so until next time remember that our business grows when we learn skills and take action using them in spite of fear so remember to design your growth and results